Hi class, welcome back. We are going to look at muscle physiology and let's take a closer look at something that is referred to as the neuromuscular junction. But before we get into the neuromuscular junction, it's important to understand and just review a basic concept. If this is the brain and this is the spinal cord, you have information that can come in through life experience, right? It can come into the spinal cord and goes up into the brain for processing. So all that information that you're taking up that's ascending, that's going up into the brain, we call that sensory information. And then after it's processed, the brain sends information down and out. Maybe, maybe it's going to the heart to make the heart beat. Maybe it's going to the lungs for breathing. Maybe it's going to the biceps brachii muscle to make it contract. So the outgoing messages are called motor, motor information. Now, in order to bring sensory information up and into the neural system, we need sensory nerves. And to send the motor information out, we need motor nerves. Okay. Uh, I'll plant a seed here. Uh, this will come to haunt us when we do neurology, but sensory neurons we call them afferent and motor neurons. These are called efferent. Okay, so we have afferent and efferent. Afferent signals also ascend, meaning they go up. And motor or efferent messages, those are going to descend, meaning they go down. Pretty simple concept. So muscle cells are stimulated to contract by motor neurons. What type of motor neurons? Somatic motor neurons. Okay, you have the somatic neural system and you have the autonomic neural system. Autonomic is made up of the sympathetics and the parasympathetics. And these are autonomic, automatic, involuntary, you have no conscious control over them. Somatic neural system is completely voluntary. I want to move my elbow, I want to move my foot, turn my head. So somatic motor neurons are the type of neurons that are going to go to the muscles. When they make contact, that exact place of contact is called the neuromuscular junction, the NMJ the neuromuscular junction. This is just a picture of an NMJ. Um, what we're looking at here is the actual skeletal muscle fibers. And everything else is going to be, here is the motor neuron. And the motor neuron is going to have axons coming off of it. And this is just an axon collateral, meaning it's a branch that comes off of it. Here's another axon collateral. And at the end of these axon collaterals, at the very, very end, it's called an axon terminal. And at the very, very end of an axon terminal is what we call a synaptic end bulb. These are very important terms. So this synaptic end bulb is where a lot of magic is going to happen between this end bulb and the muscle. So this looks like a light bulb. So this is the end of the neuron. So this is the nerve part. This is the muscle. Where they come together is the junctions, the neuromuscular junction. 
and there's lots of things at the end of this synaptic end bulb and these little vesicles that are in here one of those little vesicles one of those little vesicles stores a neurotransmitter that's called ACH and that stands for acetylcholine acetylcholine is a very important excitatory neurotransmitter acetylcholine is always excitatory at the neuromuscular junction because when you learn about uh, neurotransmitters some of them are excitatory it's like turning on a light switch and some of them are inhibitory turning the switch off acetylcholine is excitatory at the neuromuscular junction so this acetylcholine when calcium is out here and calcium moves inward to the end bulb it's going to signal these vesicles to move outward and the acetylcholine is going to find a way to hit this receptor on the muscle and when the acetylcholine hits this receptor the receptor is going to open up and allow sodium to come in okay so that's just a little framework and i'm going to repeat that many times coming a few other important words to familiarize ourselves with. Remember, these are the muscle cells. These are the myofibrils. These are all the muscle cells. And notice around muscle, we have lots of mitochondria because that's where ATP is produced. So we have lots of mitochondria. And one of these, one of these axons, one of these motor neurons that's going to hit the muscle and the exact attachment of it, they call it the motor end plate. So the exact broad flat attachment of the nerve to the muscle, on the muscle side, it's called the, mo the motor end plate. So the electrical conduction is going to continue when this happens what when this happens here and sodium rushes in it's going to create excitation lots of waves electrical waves and that electrical conduction is going to be transmitted down this t tubule it's going to go right down the t tubule and notice that there's a structure that's blue that's butting right up against the transverse tubule. The T stands for transverse. Transverse tubule because this tubule runs transversely to everything else that's going left and right. Right? All these muscle fibers are going left to right. This blue structure that looks like a, a web, uh, that's called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the sarcoplasmic reticulum, you can see that there's contact of the sarcoplasmic reticulum with the T-tubule. So the electrical current moves down the T-tubule, transmits that into the sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum now the question is why would it do that what's so important about the sarcoplasmic reticulum well the sarcoplasmic reticulum stores a really important mineral called calcium now calcium is involved with muscle contraction we don't you guys don't know exactly how yet but i'm going to show you how it's involved Okay, so you got the transverse tubule, you got the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the electrical conduction moves down the T-tubule, 
relays it into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it's going to release the calcium that's stored there. And the calcium is going to drip and drizzle and have an impact on what's deep to it, which are all these muscle fibers. And down deep in here are two biggies that we're going to learn about, actin and myosin. These are two contractile proteins. So again, just to show you the neuromuscular junction, we have this uh, neuron. It's going to have an end to it. Well, here's the neuron, the motor neuron. And you can see you got dendrites here. There's the cell body, the nucleus. Here's a axon and the axon hillock. And you see the axon going right down to the very end where you have your axon terminal. And then over here is the muscle cell. It's made up of lots of myofibrils. Some are thin, some are thick. This is where our actin and myosin are. Actin is thin, that's the blue one, and the myosin is the thicker one, it's red. And these two interact with one another to make muscles contract. All right, now you can see, here's the neuron. Right here is the uh, axon terminal with the synaptic end bulb. So if we take this, we can look up here and we can see here's the axon terminal. There's the bulb, right? That synaptic end bulb. And in it, we have a bunch of these circles that are called vesicles, synaptic vesicles. And what's in there is acetylcholine. So what happens is calcium influxes. Influx means it goes in. So you got calcium that comes in and it's going to tell these uh, vesicles to move to the end of the axon terminal or the uh, synaptic end bulb. And it's going to open up and it's going to release the acetylcholine. It does that through a method called exocytosis. Exocytosis is how this opened up and released. And now what's happening is the acetylcholine is binding to these acetylcholine receptors that are on the muscle, right? This is part of the muscle membrane. And when these open, what's going to happen is sodium rushes in. When acetylcholine hits these receptors, it's going to allow sodium to rush in. When sodium rushes in, it's, remember you have like the sodium potassium pump, remember that? So sodium is going to help depolarize or send an action potential down the T-tubule. And what connects to the T-tubule is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. What's stored in there is calcium. Okay, that's important foundational information. Again, calcium comes in, influxes to the end of that axon terminal. We have the synaptic end bulb, lots of mitochondria. You have these synaptic vesicles. What's stored in the vesicles is this neurotransmitter, acetylcholine. It's always excitatory at the neuromuscular junction. The calcium coming in tells that vesicle to open up through exocytosis. Acetylcholine is now in what's called the synaptic cleft. That's just the gap or the space between the two. From the synaptic cleft, it's going to move to the motor side, to the muscle side, find its acetylcholine receptor, hit it, open up, and it's going to depolarize it because sodium rushes in. That depolarization, that electrical current, goes down the transverse tubule, transmits it into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium. It's going to release the calcium, and that calcium is going to have some sort of impact on these 
myofibrils on actin and myosin to allow them to contract. Okay. And again, you can see here just another picture showing here is the neuromuscular junction. Where the nerve and the muscle meet, we call that the motor and plate. At the very end, at the very end, this is the synaptic end bulb. You can see you've got all those synaptic vesicles there. In this picture, it shows calcium influxing coming in through a voltage gated channel. It comes in and it sends a signal so that the acetylcholine is released through that method called exocytosis. It crosses the synaptic cleft. It crosses that synaptic cleft and it's going to bind to those green little receptors here. So now we blow it up a little bit bigger. Here's the synaptic end bulb. Here's the calcium and influx. Here's one of those vesicles opening up, releasing the acetylcholine. So the acetylcholine is released from the synaptic vesicle. Now it's in the synaptic cleft first, that's the gap, until it hits the receptor. It hits the receptor, it opens up, and look what rushes in, sodium. Sodium rushes in and creates that action potential. It's the electrical current. And that's what's going to move to the T tubule. From the T tubule to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium. Calcium is going to make the actin and myosin interact with one another somehow. I haven't discussed that yet, but I will. You can see here's the motor end plate that's on the muscle side. So again, here's the motor neuron. Coming right down, hitting the muscle. Now, in this box, this box is going to be over here. So here's the acetylcholine right there. It's going to release the acetylcholine through the synaptic cleft. You can see the little dots here. Now it's going to hit the muscle. It's going to hit those receptors. Open up. We have sodium that comes in that's going to create the excitation. That's the action potential. This right here is the T-tubule. The T-tubule butts up right against the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium, so it's going to release the calcium. Here are the myofibrils, the muscle fibers, thin and thick. That's your actin and myosin. And somehow, when that calcium is released, it's going to create the muscle contraction. It's going to produce tension. Okay. When we come back, I'm going to get into how calcium is involved in making the muscle contract.